with the news. Prime Minister Rabbi Yehamad urges Sudan not to allow foreign interference in its internal affairs. In an official statement issued in Arabic, the Premier affirms full support to the East African nation which recently foiled an attempt to coup. The statement reads, quote unquote, we wish Sudan to overcome its current ordeal with the wisdom and professionalism accustomed to our brothers and people in Sudan. We believe that Sudan should not in any way allow external interference and apparent and hidden dictates. The statement reads, the Horn of Africa is going through a phase in which the challenges facing us, especially our experiences in Ethiopia and Sudan, are joining forces in building democratic foundations for societies with the security and stability necessary to achieve the ambitions of our true peoples for development, prosperity and social justice, said the Prime Minister. The government and people of Ethiopia are closely following with sincere intention and fraternal sympathy for what's happening in the brotherly Sudan and our agenda in this regard is crystal clear, the Premier added. The Saba City Council has re-elected Adani Chabibi as mayor of the capital. She has promised to make the city comfortable, livable, and prosperous where all it is residents enjoy equality. Allah take the Maria Mazmor. Ya di sawa kata master ader kanti ba ba mohon. Ya di sawa kata master ader kanti ba ba mohon. Sirain sejamer. As part of Ethiopia's plan to form a national government on October 4, following a general election, different regional states have started forming new governments ahead of the formation of the federal government. Addis Ababa City Council has formed its new government Tuesday and re-elected Adani Chabebi as mayor of the city. Speaking on the occasion, the mayor pledged to make the city comfortable, livable and prosperous, where all its residents relish equality. Addis Ababa kata master ader yemidderagu, Politikawi, ekonomiawi, mahabarawi, na bahalawi, lemat ang kasakasochen. Making effective social, cultural, political and economic developments in the city with the new cabinet members are mandated to make Addis Ababa green, clean and suitable for all its residents. It's our prime agenda to make Addis Ababa a beacon of our prosperity and tourism and diplomatic center. Politically, the ideology of Prosperity Party will raise public participation in different activities. Adani said the new cabinet of the city considers the inclusive nature of Addis Ababa. Sticking to its firm stance that Addis Ababa is enough for all their residents, the new cabinet is expected to overcome greediness and backward attitude and serve the public equally. To make this happen, we will have short, medium and long-term plans that can help engage the people in different aspects. Activities will also be undertaken to inclusively participate opposition political parties and civic societies in the structure. We shall work to modernize our service providing system in a way that satisfies our people. Those elected for the council in the sixth general election organize government bodies that administer the city for the coming five years. <laughs> Meanwhile, the incoming Addis Ababa City Council members vowed to address key public problems. Council members also expressed readiness to contribute their share in the effort to ensure peaceful and prosperous Ethiopia. A hundred and thirty-eight newly elected Addis Ababa City Council members this warning and kicked off their official responsibility out of Tuesday, September 28, 2021. The Council appointed cabinets of a city administration in its debut for the next five-year term. Members whom Ethiopian English approached for comment expressed readiness to fulfill their promise to the residents of a city. Uh, as a member of the City Council, we are trying to do our level best to deliver the promises that we have done. There are a lot of issues that has to be addressed as, as early as possible. And there are several issues that are uh, uh, pertaining to the population living in the city uh, related to the social 
economic and political issues. So as a member of the council, I will do my level best in my area and also supporting the city council in delivering the promises that we have uh, uh, made in the area and also supporting the mayor so that we can do together as, uh, as, a, uh, as, a, as a community to serve the community back. It is a huge privilege and a huge honor to be part of this council and we also understand how big of a responsibility it is which can also be interpreted with the, with the things that we are planning to do. Um, we'll also try our at, at most best to interpret what we have been promising and we hope to work with uh, the, the whole society who voted for us and in general who voted in the, the process. Being a part of the new city government, council members also reiterated their commitment to aggressively engage in the city priorities. They vote to support the city cabinet in the effort to address the already exacerbated cost of living, job creation and housing problems, among other things. My contribution will be providing research evidence on how to reduce the cost of living and how to improve the economic condition of the city, how to improve uh, employment and how to handle, you know, how to be inclusive of uh, poor people and children and, uh, and also other social uh, disadvantaged people. So it has to be based on research results. So my contribution will be that, uh, that the city uh, should follow evidence based on uh, achieving some of uh, problem solving uh, results. The cabinet will be the one responsible to re uh, answer the so many questions of the city, economic, social and others. And the role of the council is to make sure that the executive is performing as per uh, the promises that we gave to the public, the promises that we have put into our manifesto during the election. The city council will not only be responsible to oversee, but also to support the executive and also make sure that public questions have been answered properly as per the becoming of the office. The new members also expressed urgency of properly dealing with the Tigray crisis to save the country from the burning of a war. We are at a critical point currently because of several factors that are uh, pushed by foreign governments and also several uh, key issues. And as an uh, academic institution, we are trying to support the government. We are trying to support the unity of the country and try to uh, uh, inform the outer so uh, society so that they, they will get the clear and the correct information as much as we can. We have been facing a lot of challenges that seemed like at the time very very at a break which put the country as a breaking point but we have passed all of them we're here today and we're still facing some challenges some huge challenges that as a society we need to work strongly you shouldn't forget the economic activities during the war you have to continue so my contribution will be you know how how to boost the economy and how to solve some of the problems that we see in the economic sector during the crisis. Eritrean Foreign Minister Osman Saleh blamed Tigray People's Liberation Front for rebels for provoking a major war in Tigray. The comment came from Osman during a pre-recorded message to the United Nations General Assembly in New York. Osman Saleh also accused the United States and its European allies of defending the TPLF's illicit and dangerous acts of insurrections and mimes and marshal all the tools at their disposal to rehabilitate it at any cost. TPLF's aims included subsequent military acts of aggression against Eritrea. The grave danger that this reckless and illicit acts by this rogue group to Ethiopia, Eritrea, and the Horn of Africa region as a whole is too evident to merit further elaboration. But what we find inexcusable is the position of certain countries, notably the United States and its European allies, to defend the TPLF's illicit and dangerous acts of insurrection and mayhem and marshal all the tools in their disposal to rehabilitate it 
at any cost. Ethiopians and Eritreans in the diaspora rallied again CNN in Washington, D.C. The demonstrators in their placard urged one of the world's popular media house, CNN, to stop distorting facts and the crisis in Tigray. Let's take a look. Nima al Bagir, CNN, CNN, CNN. CNN. Stop. 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 Stop, stop, reporting, reporting. fake and biased news, news. CNN. 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 CNN, stop, stop. 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 fabricating, fabricating news about Ethiopia and Eritrea, CNN. We are going to call her out. Nima, her name is Nima. Nima El Bagir. Nima El Bagir. Nima, look, listen, listen. She is a Sudanese reporter, an international correspondent, but she's not a journalist. She is a fake journalist. But reporting fake on Ethiopia, fake news. Nima shame on you! Nima shame on you! CNN! Listen, CNN! Fire Nima! She is a liar! She is a liar! Birang Park, Luna, Tamasito, and Mipalo, Wanzoch, and Denya, Gilo, Wanzale, Uletanya, Yaparo, Wanzale, Sostenya, Aluero, Wanzale, and as it sos to Wanzoch, Amatumulu, Parpunia, Paratu, Selamialfu, Yamine of Arangade, Ono, Amatumulu, Nayoale.
you're watching at this news hour. At the war against the terrorist TPLF drags on. TPLF commanders are still plotting to repeat mass massacre and as their distractions with a view to pressure the federal government. All the while, these destructive forces and their diaspora agents remain confident that the international community will stand by them. Meanwhile, some members of the diaspora and the so-called TDF have openly challenged the gross fascist assault in Afar and Amhara, as well as some tactics applied by its leadership. Seth Amrath has more. For nearly half a century, the TPLF has been a destructive machine to Ethiopia and the Horn region. During its 17-year guerrilla fighting, the TPLF looted public properties, destroyed bridges, and burned schools, courts, health centers, and killed innocent Tigrayans that stood in its way of translating its evil agendas into reality. It even neutralized its own combatants for advancing plural views. This shows the group's prime agenda is to succeed with its old political ideology of destroying whatever fits impediment to the party goal, which is weakening and ultimately dismantling Ethiopia by dividing the people and causing ethnic conflicts. And this is in fact what the party was doing in its three-decade regime as ruling party in Ethiopia, which ultimately caused massive public grievance that ousted TPLA from federal power. Some TPLF members have taken the initiative to oppose the November 2020 assault on the National Defense Force as well as the current aggression in Afar and Amara regions. This diaspora and so-called TDF wings have taken the initiative to condemn core TPLF army leaders of pulling away from reality. Some have been bold enough to call upon the leadership to renounce their old manifesto of dismantling Ethiopia and head towards ethnic Amaras etc. And a recently leaked video of TPLF commanders revealed that they are still plotting other attacks, proving that they remain dugged in their paths of destruction. بحالنا خم صور دماء أمنينا كن صور يازما نعاد سير جذي كم زيد كم نصنع خم زي كعلون فلتنا سلذي فنجو إيدهم حزم حزم الله فنجي إم صوت الله أو إيدهم ما تندي أنا زي نعام أنا مو دا ثا جمادي أتريفاتهم زلا تنبزحات جمادا توش تزنوران ناتم تخان ناتم تخات ودين in spite of the fact that a lot of Tigran children and youths have died being cannon fodderers in TPLF's foray into Afar and Amara regions, the TPLF continues to use aid trucks for destructive war and even plot further assault against innocent Amara and Afars. TPLF warmongers have further revealed that there are members of the Ethiopian diplomatic mission abroad who are giving them a hand in this destructive endeavor. انترسي ام هنا صانا وحدنتا زخونا عينت ان كان زلو صغن فطير زي فلط حزبي منالباش هيوت النبرات الفلطوت من نزع دجد النوح وان سر حزبي سلازي حزي اشاطر ما يصلاون دا فشله تخكلنيا اقوامن اكايدان حزب تغرايون اندا تردى عالم يخيدلو سلازي تعاوتا اين تيلكمني بوليتيكالي ليغالي اند بوتادراون تخونه نا بنا حزبنا مورال حلاو انت هنا بنا علم دبلوماسي انت هنا ابي رحوات كيدنا لنا ابز العلو تدراوي عقم بصحنا لنا احنا سلاي بتشبط نهلونا ايلو زاربلو نحنا ها هلونا نا رغاغيسنا سلا ادم من ايتيوبيان بوليتيشن از اكيوز ذا تي بي ال اف اوف يوزينغ ذا ماني ات لوتيد فروم ايتيوبيا فور انترناشونال لابينغ that explains why international diplomacy has for the most part tilted in its favor. Opposition candidates who made it to the parliament hope that the new House of People's Representatives will entertain different ideas for a new political dispensation. They also urged the new government to work on uniting the country 
at this critical time. Ethiopia is in a countdown to see the formation of a new government which is supposed to accommodate different interests unlike the previous ones. Taking the majority of votes, the ruling party is supposed to dominate the new parliament, but many are optimistic that opposition political figures will take government positions. Though few in number, opposition political candidates or may day to the parliament hope that the new parliament will entertain different ideas, accepting the role for a new political dispensation. We believe that it would have been better if we had a parliament that accommodates different thoughts and ideologies. But unfortunately, only a handful of opposing candidates could make it to the parliament. Whatever the case, we will do our best to make it a place where different ideas will be discussed. The people expect us to raise issues that should be addressed by the incumbent. I hope our presence will add some color to the parliament. The house will be quite different as a range of ideas will most likely be entertained. Members of parliament should not be up here to only raise hands. There should be a friction of ideas. Supreme power is bestowed up on the parliament by the constitution, so it should exercise its power to protect the people and sovereignty of the nation. It is also said that the organizational structure alone will not be effective and that human resource placement and management guidelines supported by qualified professionals should be given due attention. China strongly opposes arbitrary unilateral sanctions or the use of force or interference in other countries' internal affairs, says Chinese ambassador to Ethiopia, Jiao Jian. The ambassador made the remark in virtual reception celebrating the 72nd anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. The ambassador affirmed that China firmly supports Ethiopia's efforts in safeguarding national sovereignty and independence and believe that the government has the capacity and wisdom of managing internal affairs. China will continue to work along with the Ethiopian people for peace, stability and prosperity, the ambassador added. Both China and Ethiopia are ancient civilizations. The two countries' people have the sheer character of tenacity and perseverance. China-Ethiopia traditional friendship is time-tested and keeps gaining strength, as the ambassador indicated. The iconic Ethiopian film producer and director Tiro Stishoma briefed EU representatives to Ethiopia to help them understand the real cause of the Tigray crisis. Theoros unequivocally pointed out that the TPLF is aggressively working and conspiring to make ethnicities in the country pitting against one another. The TPLF was forced to leave power after 27 years of looting the country to its to score. And the current Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed came to power with a promise to bring the country together and also with a promise to make peace with Eritrea. The TPLF knew their time has come to take it to the north and start working towards their hidden agenda of secession. Unusually in Africa, the new Prime Minister allowed the TPLF members to take whatever they looted and live peacefully in their region. But the TPLF forces wouldn't take it in staying without power. Their hunger for power wouldn't let go. They started using the money they looted to buy greedy messengers within different states of Ethiopia and funded extremists to kill their own races brutally. The new Ethiopian government literally begged the TPLF forces to stop their evil deeds to an elephant's ear. And the TPLF forces attacked the military base with more than 75% of the nation's weaponry and killed thousands of soldiers who have been protecting them for 20 years and vowed to wage war against Ethiopia. The Ethiopian's defense force retaliated, took over the weapons, and the Amhara militia took back the land that was being 
that has been taken by force from it 30 years ago. Theo Ross urged the EU and its member states to support the government of Ethiopia at this very critical time if they really want to see a united Ethiopia. Ethiopian National Defense Force has won the war at the battlefront, but it is defeated with the diplomatic war and the propaganda. Diplomacy in the developed world is all about money, lobbyists, connection, and nepotism. The TPLF leaders have done their job well by assigning their members and supporters like Dr. Tedros Adhanom of WHO so that they disseminate their fabricated information when the day comes. The new Ethiopian government didn't get enough time to work on all these fields before the war took its full course. It looks like the American government and the European Union are biased and are sympathizing with the TPLF forces who have been declared terrorists by the Ethiopian parliament. We Ethiopians are sad to hear that well-respected organizations like the European Union can easily be manipulated by baseless and misleading informations of the TPLF. But I tell you now that helping the TPLF means destabilizing the Horn of Africa. So, if you want a strong nation in the Horn of Africa, please help your friends in the European Union to stand with Ethiopia. If you are confused whom to trust, just take your hands off Ethiopia. Tell your friends at the European Union to take their hands off Ethiopia and let us solve our problems the way we can. Investments about $280 billion will be needed to cope with the effects of climate change in 35 cities in South Africa, Kenya, and Ethiopia by 2050, new research shows. In recent years, unusually strong cyclones have struck the continent's southeast coast, droughts have parched southern Africa, and floods and landslides have plagued the Horn of Africa. Cape Town, South Africa's second largest city, almost ran out of water in 2018. South Africa will need $215 billion investment in its cities, Kenya $27 billion, and Ethiopia $42 billion, the report found out. Finally, after the horrors that healthcare workers have endured during the pandemic, many are struggling to sympathize with people who won't get vaccinated. Doctors in South Africa are pleading with patients to get job as those ending up in ICU with uh, severe symptoms are mainly unvaccinated. Strained doctors and healthcare workers say they are now scumbing to compassion fatigue. Just to remind you the headlines. At this Ababa New City Council appoints its mayor. And uh, Ethiopians and Eritreans in Washington, D.C. rallied against CNN.
That's all for this edition. Thank you for watching. Goodbye and stay.